Everyone knows if you shake up a carbonated drink, <laughs> it explodes. But why is this? Well, here I have an identical bottle with a pressure gauge fitted to it. And I want you to make a prediction right here. If I shake up this bottle, will the pressure increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay, I hope you have made your prediction and registered it in the poll up here. This bottle has been sitting stationary for a few days at room temperature. You can see the pressure reading is about three atmospheres, 330 kilopascals. And I'm going to shake it up and see what happens. Ready? In three, two, one. And the pressure is still the same. And you might suspect that, well, maybe this bottle is all out of gas. Maybe it wouldn't explode on me. So just to make sure. Yep, it would go. So it's not an increase in pressure that causes a bottle to uh, explode like that. So why is it? Well, you shouldn't feel bad if you predicted that the pressure would increase because in fact, that explanation was published in New Scientist in 1986, uh, leading many other scientists to come forward saying that is not the real explanation. So we will find out what it is after we explore the second perplexing physics problem. Consider this, if you put identical ice cubes in a cup of fresh water and a cup of salt water, which ice cube will melt first? Again, you can register your prediction by answering the poll here. Now, as you're thinking about that, I wanna show you the setup. Okay, so here I have regular fresh water. I'm just gonna fill up each cup. Then I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of salt into this cup on the right. Now, if you know a bit about chemistry, you may recognize that adding sodium chloride to water actually takes energy, and so it lowers the temperature of this solution by a little bit. So I've got a thermometer uh, just to check, and I'm gonna let this solution sit here for a while uh, so that it comes back up to room temperature. Okay, have you made your prediction? Let's put these ice cubes in. In three, two, one, and they're off. <laughs> Watching ice cubes melt. Isn't this entertaining YouTube? 얼음을 넣은 지 1분 정도밖에 되지 않았지만 육안으로도 그냥 물에 들어가 있는 얼음이 훨씬 더 빠르게 녹고 있는 걸 확인할 수 있습니다. 그런데 뭔가 이상한 사실이 하나 있습니다. 겨울에 분명 도로에 소금을 뿌려서 눈을 빨리 녹이는데요. 그런데 왜 소금물 속 얼음은 더 빠르게 녹지 않는 걸까요? 이에 대한 설명은 찬찬히 해보도록 하죠. But first, let's go to the third perplexing physics problem. Okay, here I have a metal ring and a closed loop of chain. And I'm gonna do this all in one take so you know that I'm not playing any tricks. So what I'm gonna do is dangle the chain and then hold the ring over it, like so, and then I'm gonna drop the ring. And exactly what you expect happens. The ring just falls off this chain and of course, how could anything else possibly happen because, well, it's a closed loop of chain and a closed ring. But if you think about it really hard, you can get the ring to stick on the chain. Have a look at that. So how does this work? Well, I think we're gonna have to go to some slow-mo footage to really see what's going on. Now I'll let you in on the secret. When you want the ring to stick on the chain, the key is to let it go on one side before the other side. So I'm gonna let, let it go with my thumb first and it'll just sort of slide off my finger. And by doing that, the ring will stick on the chain. 고리를 한쪽만 먼저 놓게 되면 한 90도 정도로 회전을 한채 체인 사이로 미끄러지게 됩니다. 이때 체인이 고리의 옆면으로 밀리게 되고 고리가 체인 끝까지 내려왔을 때는 체인의 끝부분이 고리의 중간으로 빨려 들어가듯이 들어가게 되어서 
마지막 순간에 당겨지게 되어 고리에 묶이게 되는 거죠 이렇게 고리가 묶이게 되는 거죠 So that's how you can get a ring locked on to a closed loop of chain. So back to problem number two. 왜 얼음 조각이 그냥 물에 있을 때 소금물에 있는 것보다 더 빨리 녹을까요? 이 현상을 더잘 이해할 수 있기 위해 두컵 모두 식용색소를 얼음 위에 떨어뜨려 보겠습니다. 얼음에서 녹아 나오는 물의 온도가 낮기 때문에 주변보다는 밀도가 조금 더 높습니다. 따라서 찬물은 물컵 아래로 내려오게 됐죠 이는 더 따뜻한 물을 위로 올려 얼음과 맞닿게 하여서 결과적으로 얼음이 더 빨리 녹게 되는 거죠 하지만 소금물의 경우에는 한번 식용색소를 떨어뜨려 보면 얼음이 맞닿아 있는 소금물에 비해서 밀도가 낮기 때문에 얼음에서 나오는 차가운 물은 얼음 주위에서만 머물게 됩니다 이는 따뜻한 소금물부터 단열 효과를 일으키게 되죠. 이로 인해 소금물과 덜 섞이게 되는 것이죠. Okay, that seems like a very uh, plausible explanation and maybe a convincing demonstration, but in the edit, uh, me from the future, I decided that, you know, maybe this wasn't the best way to explain this because well, you're just dropping food coloring in there and maybe food coloring would just float on the surface of salt water anyway and sink in fresh water. So, uh, not a good demonstration. So a better demonstration, I thought, might be if we use colored ice cubes to begin with. 색소의 양이 많아 육안으로 확인하기 조금 어려울 수 있지만 소금물과 다르게 일반적인 물에서는 물의 흐름이 아래쪽으로 더 흘러 내려가는 모습을 확인하실 수 있습니다. So I think this does clearly show. Uh, what I was saying. 이전 실험에서도 마찬가지로 식용색소가 소금물에서는 충분히 섞이지 않는 모습을 확인하실 수 있습니다. 대류 현상이 덜 일어나는 거죠. So why do shaken carbonated drinks explode? Well, first, let's explain why the pressure doesn't increase in the headspace when you shake it up. This is because of equilibrium. You know, when you pick up a bottle of soda in the grocery store, it's been sitting there for a few days. So the dissolved gas, the dissolved CO2 in the liquid is at equilibrium with the gas up here in the headspace. And that equilibrium only depends on the temperature and the pressure of gas in the headspace. So no amount of shaking is going to change the pressure up here. For most soda bottles these days, that pressure is about three atmospheres. Now you can actually hear those three atmospheres of pressure get released when I open the bottle. But of course, that's not messy because it's just gas coming out the top. There's no liquid. But now, the liquid is no longer in equilibrium. I mean, it used to be under three atmospheres of pressure, and now it's just under one atmosphere, ambient pressure. And so because of that, there is more dissolved CO2 in this liquid than would be at equilibrium at this pressure. And so the CO2 starts to come out of solution and, well, those are the bubbles that you taste. That's why this drink is fizzy. Non-equilibrium beverage. And if you leave it open, those bubbles will keep coming out until the whole drink goes flat. Now, I'm gonna put the pressure gauge on top of this bottle so we can actually see the CO2 coming out of solution and increasing the pressure right here. 이걸 실온에 충분히 오랫동안 두면 결국 매우 느리게 증가하여 평형인 3기압이 됩니다. But as you can see, it is a very slow process. And that's because it's actually quite hard for dissolved gas like CO2 to spontaneously come out of solution. One way that I can accelerate this process is by introducing nucleation sites into the liquid. And one example of a nucleation site is a tiny gas bubble. So if I shake up the bottle, what I'm actually doing is introducing little nucleation sites, tiny air bubbles, into the liquid, and that makes it easier for the CO2 to come out of solution, and so we'll see this pressure increase much more rapidly. Are you ready? I'm gonna shake it up in three, two, one. And there you see the pressure has 
quite quickly come back to about three atmospheres, 320 kilopascals. 밀폐된 평형 상태의 탄산음료를 흔든다는 것은 음료 내부에 압력을 증가시키는 게 아니라 액체 핵생성 사이트로 작용하는 작은 기포들을 만들어내는 겁니다. 기포들 중에 일부는 병의 벽면에 달라붙어 있죠. 따라서 음료 뚜껑을 열게 되면 이 기포들은 두 가지 일을 하게 될 겁니다. 첫 번째로 기포가 압력이 줄어들면서 팽창하여 액체를 위로 밀어내죠. 두 번째로 핵생성 사이트로 인해 용종된 이산화탄소가 용액에서 더 빨리 나오게 만드는 겁니다. 이두 가지로 인해서 탄산음료가 폭발하는 거죠. 어떻게 하면 폭발하지 않게 만들 수 있을까요? 바로 병의 벽을 가볍게 두드리는 겁니다. That gets rid of those bubbles that are clinging to the sides and allows you to open the bottle without incident. Ha! It worked. Now, is there a way to introduce nucleation sites into a carbonated drink without shaking it? Yes. That's exactly what you're doing when you put a Mentos in a carbonated drink. Mentos의 거친 표면이 핵생성 사이트를 일으키면서 이산화탄소가 용액에서 더 빠르게 나오도록 만들어 분수처럼 쏟아져 나오는 거죠. Me again. So when I showed this video to Diana, the physics girl, she asked whether paper straws have more nucleation sites than plastic ones. And to be honest, I'm not sure about the research around this, but uh, there are some other YouTube videos uh, showing how drinks overflow when you put a paper straw in. And also uh, my little preliminary analysis with this paper straw uh, show that it does indeed create more bubbles than a plastic straw. So if you needed another reason to hate paper straws, well, there you go. They make your carbonated drink more fizzy as it comes up the straw. This has been three perplexing physics problems. If you have any other perplexing science problems, put them in the comments below.